Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> um, I have been informed that I speak too fast, and uh, people often don't understand my accent. So I have decided to speak slowly. <laughs> my name is Nnemeke Ikebuonu, and I am from Nigeria. My last name, Ikebuonu, means somebody that talks too much in my language. <laughs> but I will not talk too much. I am a farmer, I am a social entrepreneur, and I am a radio presenter. But today, I want to tell you people a story. And the title of my story is, For the Tomato, the Clock is Ticking. In this picture, I have Chibweze. Chibweze is a farmer, very hardworking farmer. And every day, Chibweze harvests about five baskets of tomatoes. But the moment Chibweze plucks that tomato from that tree, the clock begins to tick. And on my radio station, the smallholder farmer Surura Radio, a radio network I established 12 years ago, broadcasting to an estimated 2 million listeners, I broadcast that day's commodity price for Chibweze. As I am broadcasting, the clock is ticking. But Chibweze makes a quick phone call, and he calls Eugene. And Eugene arrives with his van, and Eugene starts to sleep. We think Eugene sleeps too much. <laughs> but Eugene is not sleeping because he loves sleeping in the day. Eugene sleeps because he understands that it takes time for Chibweze and other farmers to gather their tomatoes, put it inside the basket, and stack inside his van. The clock continues to tick for the tomato. Now Eugene makes an eight-hour trip with road. The tomato is battered. Then it arrives at the central market. And Eugene hands over the tomato to Alex. First of all, Alex has this beautiful umbrella protecting his head under 95 degrees Fahrenheit sunshine. He leaves the tomato. And the clock continues to tick for the tomato. Four hours into the market day, Alex is running around. There is no storage in the market. He gathers fresh leaves. He covers his tomato, but the clock continues to tick for the tomato. By 6 p.m. that day, Alex is tired. He dumps the tomato, and he goes back home. The clock has finished ticking for the tomato. And as a radio broadcaster, I go out, and I ask farmers like Chibweze and retailers like Alex, how was business today? And they tell me, oh, forget about that business. We lose 45%. Hmm. And you know the Rockefeller Foundation came up last year and published one beautiful report saying that this problem, lack of cold storage for perishable food in Africa, affects 200 million smallholder farmers all across Africa. And they lose 606 metric tons of perishable food every year. Ladies and gentlemen, in our world of so much advancement in science and technology, there is no reason for those numbers. Three years ago, we began a research. Eighteen months ago, we launched the first solar-powered cold room, a walk-in refrigerator, so well designed that it can be installed inside the farm for Chibweze and inside the market for Alex. We are bringing refrigeration to them. And what they need to do is very simple. They just bring their baskets of tomatoes, and we transfer into these clean plastic crates. Then we stack them inside the cold room, extending the shelf life from two days to 21 days. And all they have to do is to pay us a little bit of money, 100 Nigerian Naira, an equivalent of 50 US cents for one day storage. With this, we eliminate those losses completely and increase their income. Is a simple technology for a problem that is complex, but is a simple solution. We have been able to build one of these code rooms. We took it around 11 states of Nigeria, validating the technology, and farmers proposed a business model. Now we are ready to build 10 by the end of the year, and another 50 by next year. Then we can go to Kenya, we can go to Zimbabwe. We came to Fledge to say and also to appeal that we are trying to raise 100,000 US dollars. And we are appealing to 
always good Americans <laughs> to help us as we are on this journey to raise 100,000 US dollars. So we can source the cold room panels, the solar panels, the batteries, and a little bit of money for operations and build 10 cold rooms, install the 10 of them in markets and farms across Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of my story. Thank you. <laughs>